Hello everyone, photographer Andre Designs here with a new how-to video and today I'm going to show you guys some tips and tricks that I've learned recently in Photoshop. Alright, so let's start with the first one. The first one is actually removing um, wrinkles or pimples from the model's face using the spot healing brush. But guess what, we're going to do it a little bit different. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come over here to the spot healing brush. What you're going to do is to like right click or hold down on the uh, spot healing brush here or you can actually do control not control shift J until you see the spot healing brush appears once the spot healing brush appears what you're gonna do is to create a new layer and then we're gonna work on removing the uh, pimples from the, the model's face so these are not actually pimples they these are what but I'm gonna show you like a trick alright so what you wanna do is to come over here and you wanna change the blending mode if if the um if the pimple or whatever you're moving or the wrinkle is dark what you want to do is to lighten it all right so you're going to come right here where the mode is and click lighten and then watch this you click once and it goes away because what happened is that it's removing the brighter pixels from i mean the darker pixels from the image all right and let's say you have a section here that is bright watch this you come here you go to the darken and then you click and it will remove it and the good thing about this trick is that it will maintain the texture in the model's skin if you use like um, the patch tool or any one of those tools sometimes what you're doing is actually getting a section from another section to put over this section so this would actually help uh, you know and you do not work on the image itself you work on a layer so I hope that was a good one the next trick is something that I mean most of you will not actually use or may not know that this option is actually available but if you're using Photoshop CC the new one what you could actually do is to change the background color right here you can actually just right click and you can change it to black dark gray medium gray light gray or you can put it to whatever color you want to put it at you can like select a color maybe you can select a color for here or for a bandana you can do whatever you want as it relates to the color but i like the default one so <laughs> i'm using the default one i hope that one was good as well all right so this one is uh something that i've learned recently as well i actually did not know that you can actually put a password on a logo for example if you created a logo for a client and you want them to just look at it in a pdf format and you do not want them to print it or use it in any way you can actually lock that logo all right so I'm gonna show you guys how to do that so what you want to do first is to all right let me put it back in okay good so what you want to do first is to come to file save as and then you're gonna change it to PDF where's PDF uh, PDF good and then let's see I'm gonna save it on my desktop so you want to click save and once you hit save it's gonna ask if you want to um, overwrite what you've had whatever whatever good what you want to do is to come down to security right and then you're gonna come down to the section that says permissions you're gonna select use a restricted uh, use a password to restrict printing and editing and so forth so what you wanna do is to put in a password right I'm gonna use one two three four five six good and then if you wanna select any of other these options you can select them if you wish so you wanna save and then it's gonna ask you to confirm it so one two three four five six and then okay so it gives you some information on the document i'm just going to pray yes and then i'm going to go to my desktop now and i'm going to pull up the document so you want them to preview the logo but you do not want them to edit it or anything like that print it or edit so if you look right here you cannot edit you cannot save you cannot do anything at all you if you come over here to click edit it will ask you for the password and only if you have the password you can actually edit the document see that so without any password you cannot uh, do anything so if you edit an image and you want to send it to a client or a logo and you do not want them to print it or save it or you know edit it that's a trick that you could use as well alright I'm not sure how helpful this one will be but I'm just gonna share this trick with you guys alright let's say you want to have a duplicate of this image beside you want to have two images beside each other and you want to make adjustments to one and actually see the live adjustment on the other one alright let's look at this so we're gonna come here to where it says windows we're gonna to go to arrange then we're gonna come down here to say the one that says 
uh, new windows for the image. This is the image that's here. So that's the image name. So it creates two image. It's the same image. So any adjustment you make on this image will reflect on this image. So what you want to do now is to put them side to side. So we're going to come back here to arrange and then windows arrange. And then we're going to go to a vertical up. All right. Our two vertical up. Then what we're going to do, let's say I want to zoom in this image and make some adjustments. And I want to see what it looks like when it's not zoomed in. All right. For example, say I'm going to uh, remove this patch right here. All right. So I'm going to come here. Well, I'm going to yeah get my patch tool and then I'm just going to remove this. So look at this image over here while I'm making the adjustment. So I'm going to remove this big patch right here. You see that? It disappears over here. That wasn't a good job, but you get the idea. <laughs> you can edit an image on one side and because there are times it's best that you have your image zoomed out and you can actually see real time what you're doing. It's best for you to do that at times. Sometimes when you zoom up the image and you make your adjustments and you zoom it out, you realize that, hey, the adjustment I've just made doesn't make any sense and you have to undo it. So if you're like, zoom it up on one side and then over the other side, you can actually see what you're doing. You can make um, your work easier. All right, so this is another trick that I think is really, really useful, right? Let's say you want to add like a lens flare on the necklace right here. Or maybe you want to add it on the ring. Or maybe you want to add it on the earring right here. We have a very easy way to ensure that it's precise. Because guess what? If you want to, for example, let's, let's do this. We're going to create a new layer. And we're going to try to add a lens flare right here. Right? So we're going to go to filter. We're going to come down here to where it says uh, render. And then lens flare. You know, we cannot zoom this in and you're not sure where it's going to be. So let's say I'm going to click right there and then I'm going to get this a little bit smaller. And then, okay, look what happened. It went right there and not in the center. So guess what? There's a very easy way for you to do it to ensure that it's precise. All right. What you can actually do is to maybe get these layers here. These rulers are guides and you want to put it right there. So what you want to do is to go to Windows and then go to Info. Or you can press F8 if you're using a Windows computer. Then you want to ensure that you are using Pixel. And then you can just put your mouse right in the center right there. So what you want to write down is the number that is at the X value right here. The X and Y value. So I'm going to come back right there. You just want to write it down. It's going to get it right in my phone right now very quickly. So it's 1356 and 1095 pixel all right so what we want to do now is to create a new layer and then we want to fill this with black all right so you want to hold on because the foreground is black you want to hold on on uh, alt and then backspace and then you want to change the blending option to screen so you can see what's behind it all right so the next step now is to go up here to where it says uh filter and then you're going to come down to render and then you'll come down to lens flare. Then what you want to do now is to select the lens flare that you'd like to use. Let's say I want to use that one. And then in order for you to put in the numbers that you got here, you have to hold on an alt and then you press once. Then you can type in the pixels. So let me get my phone. It says 1356 and then 90. 95 so this is called the precise flare center and then you just press ok and then it goes exactly where it should so let me just press ok you see that right on the dot and what you could do now you could maybe use this to lower the opacity a little bit or whatever you'd like to do so I hope that one was a useful trick <laughs> So that is the five tips that I've learned recently in Photoshop that I'd wish to share with you guys. If you enjoyed this, give me a like, give me a thumbs up. Like and thumbs up, that's the same thing. <laughs> share this video, subscribe, and if you want more of these type of videos, ensure that you turn a notification bell so you'll be notified each time another video is uploaded. I'm going to be adding more tips and tricks, so stay tuned for that. Thank you guys for watching and have a good one. Bye-bye.